hello guys so in this particular video i want to show us how to georeference our drone images using the ground control points that we that we uh, make use of while on the field so the uh, primary purpose of using a ground control point is to georeference those images that have been captured by the drone while um, processing in order to get deliverables like auto mosaic, digital elevation image, uh, models and the likes. So but before we try and um, do or check how we can use the drone control points to reference the images or align the photos, at first we need to try and import the photos, do some alignment, then before getting to the ground control point processing. So now we are in Agisoft MetaShape. So Agisoft MetaShape is one of the drone processing software that we have out there. So I've actually opened the Agisoft MetaShape and this is the interface. So now the very first thing I want to do is to import our images. So you can go to the wind for workflow tab that you have at the um, top of the screen. So you can click on workflow. So you can add photos or you can even go to add folder and add the folder that you have your images. So this is the images. This is the folder that I have the images. I can select that folder and they will bring in, I will select on single scenes and they will bring in all the photos I have in that folder. So you can see these are the photos or you can also go to the same workflow and add the photos manually. So you can from here select all the photos and click on open to bring them in. So after, so here, at the center of the screen, you can notice some points. So those points are the different um, images being captured by the drone. So you can see DJI 077, 0078. So those are, those points are serving as the different images that drone captured while in the field. So now after bringing in the photos or the images, one thing I will suggest or I'll advise we do is to change the coordinate system to our, our local datum. So in a situation that you are now working with the popular WGS coordinate, which is in longitude and latitude, you can change the coordinate to your local datum. So for in Nigeria, we are using the MINA UTM datum at 31 knots. So now i would like to convert the coordinates you can see beside the label for the images we have the longitude and the latitude so now in wgs so i would like to convert this to our local data which is MENA. so what you're going to do that is to under this reference tab these different icons so you can come to this fourth one here it means convert so you can convert your coordinate system so when i click on convert on this new um box then you can click on this arrow, then go to more, click on more. So here you can see the different um, coordinate system we have. So since you can use your scroll button using your mouse to scroll to where you have um, your own local coordinate system. So this is me now here. But I also know the EPSD code. So in this situation that you know the EPSD, EPSD code, you can type it here. And when you click on enter, it's going to bring up that coordinate system. So this is this MINA UTM zone 31 knots, 26331. So I select it and click on OK. So I haven't selected your coordinate system, then you can click on OK. So when you click on OK, you should notice that it has changed from longitude and latitude to eastern and northern. So now we've converted our coordinates system we have converted the previous coordinate system to our desired coordinate system so the next thing we need to do is to align the photos align the photos so um in this photos tab that you have here you can see the different photos so this these are the photos at different um, time lapse you can see so these are the photos. So this pane where you have job is going to be showing you the different process you're actually carrying out. So we've aligned the photos. So now let's 
go back to our processing. So after adding the photos, the next thing we need to do, and changing the coordinate system, now we need to align the photos. So you click on align photos, then you come to advance, you can select this adaptive camera model fitting, then your key point in 40,000, then your type point limit in 4,000. So you can, the accuracy, depending on the, your machine, your laptop or computer, the processing speed, you can choose it to be highest, medium, high, or low. So because of the training purpose, I'm going to leave it at lowest, then we are good to go. So I'll click on OK. So now you, you should have a notification that the processing is in progress. So this is going to take some amount of time. So uh, we are going to continue the training while, or when the processing is done, when the photos have been aligned. So now the photos have all be aligned. So you can see, you can see the photos. So you can see. So let me zoom in. So you have this blue banding box around each of the image. And again, if you look at this screen closely, there is a there is a shape that is somehow or somewhat circular. So the functionality or the function of this um, ball-like shape is for you to move your image view at different angles. So using this red um, vertical line, you can move this window up and down. So you can see. So you can see, you can move this particular box up and down or using the green horizontal line then you can move it sideways so that's one of or that's the function basically so now going back to our steps now what we need to do or what we are supposed to do after aligning the photos is to import the ground control points to georeference the images to georeference the images so you can switch these tabs so this is to view your photos this is to view the images and this is to view the processing um, pane so now we have to um, bring in our gcps so in order to bring in your gcp you still need to go back to your reference tab here so the very first icon there is to import GCPs, import reference. So now you click on that icon, then you go to the folder where you have your GCP saved as CSV format or in CSV format, rather. So this is my GCP. I'm going to click on that. Uh, in this new window where you have import CSV, you make sure you check that you are in the right coordinate system. You can see me now, ETM zone 31 then the delimiter should be in comma so then the columns you need to make sure that the label east and north and altitude are all referencing their columns so if you look at the preview window here the label is correct is in column one the nothings is in column two the eastern is in column three and the altitude is in column four so we are good to go. So you can click on OK. So you can click on Yes to All. So now we are interested in GCP4 and GCP5. We can delete the name the P1 and P2. So you can click on that, right click, then remove marker. OK. Remove marker. Remove marker. So though it is always advisable for large drone survey, you should have more ground control points in order to better for in order to improve the accuracy of the image. So we have ground control four and five. So there are situations that you might not be able to assess some other part of the area of interest. So and the same thing that happened to us here, so we have to place the ground control point where it was accessible. 
Okay, so now we've brought in the ground control point. So after bringing your ground control point, so now you need to right click. You need to select on the end of the ground control point to align your photos. So you right click and filter photos by marker. So you go to filter photos by marker. When I click on that, if I look at this pane, you see that the whole image has been reduced to some set of images. So basically, these are the images. These images you have here are the images that are actually covered or that you have the gun control points to cover. So these images have the ground control points in there. So now, what you need to do, you need to double click on that image and adjust the point you have here to where you have your ground control points on ground. So on ground, we have the ground control point somewhere here. Let me zoom in. Okay, so this is the ground control point. So you have to hold down this using your mouse and take it to the center of that marker on ground. So I will assume that is the center of the marker. So you do the same thing for like two to three, five images. Then the rest should align themselves after doing like four or two to five um, images. So again, so if I go to the top, you can see it's getting closer. So, so the association they have images, more images, and you don't want to start um, adjusting the gun, the point to the center of each of those gun control points. So you can see. So you can see. So after taking out the images and you're satisfied that the ground control point is at the center, then you can go to the next point. So, okay. 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 So let me check this. Let's say this is the camera angle. Just sort that. So I guess I want to do for all of these images. Let me adjust those points, the marker to the center. Wow. There was a bit of sunlight here. Wow, well, can you see anything? Okay. Okay. Okay, wait. All right, so when you're done with the first one, you can go to the second one, you right click, then filter by photos. So double click, so you double click on those images. So when you zoom out, so this is the ground control point of eye. So you need to click, you left click on that marker and move it to the ground control point. So this is the ground control point. Okay. So this is the ground control point here. So let me assume the center. So you can see after doing two of the GCPs, the marker is finding a way to align itself to the center of the other GCPs that are here to manipulate or adjust. Okay. Okay, so let me go to the last one. Let's see. It's actually not here. I can't find one here, so. Okay. Okay. This is okay. Okay. All right. Okay. This is not here. Okay. All right. So you are good to go. So after 
adjusting your markers to center on the ground control point or basically that's how you center your markers on the ground control point so what you should do after working with your ground control point is you need to optimize camera alignment so you come to the reference tab again then your um, this star shape uh, icon that you have here is used to optimize camera so you click on that i think you can select all these you can select all these so i leave them by default but make sure you select the adaptive camera model fitting and you can click on ok so this should take few seconds so if you follow the step through you load your images into metaship you change the coordinate system if there's need to do that or you still want to stick with the wgs84 as a default then after changing the coordinate system you align your photos after aligning the photos you bring in your ground control points then adjust the markers to the center of the ground control point after doing so you optimize the camera alignment so now we've actually optimized our camera alignment so now the next thing we need to do is to build just come to the workflow and build dense cloud so this is now when you click on build dense cloud you need to for quality you know what you want depending like i mentioned before your um, computer laptop processing speed so i'm going to put this to lowest then advance then you can leave this you can put this to might disable moderate aggressive but i'll leave this as might so um this is one of the process in uh drone image processing that i used to take a lot of time it takes hours like i mentioned depending on your laptop or computer processing speed so i'll click on ok so now um the processing is in progress so after the dense cloud the next thing we need to do is to build mesh after a build mesh then we can build auto mosaic so from auto mosaic we can export the auto mosaic that has been built so uh we'll get back right into the training when this processing step is done so we've we are done with um building the dense cloud so after building dense cloud the next step to take is to build mesh build mesh so you still go back to the workflow tab then on to build mesh so here you select the dense cloud um then you did the, that's the dense class you built that's the source data then you leave this as calculate vertex colors and uh, you are good to go so let's click on ok so like i mentioned before building the this cloud takes most of the time but other processing is quite um fast so again you can use this tab to look at your photos your console and your jobs so if you look at your jobs like i mentioned before it shows you the tasks you've carried out so far so it's aligning photos you optimize the alignment you build this cloud and the mesh has been built so we can use this ball shape to check what has been done so far you can so you can see so now after building the mesh now we can build the auto mosaic now depending if you want to do more of 3d or you want to check um, you want to build a digital elevation uh, model so you can go ahead and click on build the them build texture build time model but for this training We'll be focusing on auto mosaic so after building a mesh we can go ahead and click on build auto mosaic so here you should also uh, note the, uh, the coordinate system then surface what are you using we are using the mesh that we built previously then the mosaic then you can leave this as um, default then we can click on ok so this should take a few minutes i believe so you can see the processing can you under the jobs tab so you can see so this should take some minutes then we should be good to go so okay and this is this pin actually if you calculate the minute so we'll be back when this processing step is done 
Okay, now we can confirm that the auto mosaic has been built. So if you look at the tax bar here, you can see build auto mosaic finish 100%. Now for you to preview in uh, the auto mosaic that has been done in Azisoft Metashape, you can come to this auto tab, you click on it, here you go. So here you have uh, the auto mosaic that have been uh, compiled or mosaic out of the drone images that was captured in the field. So now from here you might want to export the auto mosaic. And how to do that is by going to file. Okay, let me save first. If I go to file, then I'll go to export, then export auto mosaic. So you can see from the export options, you have other, um, you can export auto photos, you can export auto mosaics and the like. So now let's export the auto mosaic. So you can export as Google KMZ, GeoPackage and the likes. Well, let's export it as a TIFF file. So here, after clicking on export as TIFF or PNG, you have this um, dialog box. So here you can confirm the coordinate system. So what you need to do is to come down here, you can give the image description. Um, let me just say drone survey. And let's say output. You might decide not to add anything. So here you can increase the image quality, the JPEG image quality. Then the TIFF compression, when you click on this down arrow, you have other options here. But let's let me click on JPEG. And from here, you are good to go. So I'll click on export. So let me give it a name. Drone Auto Mosaic. I don't know if this is going to okay. Let's try. Is this supposed to work? Uh, PNG. So let's save. So I want to save it as PNG. So let's see our output. So this should take a um, few seconds, up to a minute. So after this is done, we can go to our folder to preview the exported um, file. So basically, that's how you process your drone images. As a recap, let me minimum. Okay, as a recap, you need to upload or import your photos. So after importing your photos, the next thing you need to do is to change coordinate system. If there is need to do that, or if you want to stick with the WGS84, you can continue. So after uploading your photos, you change your coordinate system, if there's need for that. After changing the coordinate um, system, then you need to align the photos. So you click on align photos. So after aligning the photos, what you need to do is now to um, optimize camera alignment. No, sorry. After aligning the photos, you need to um, bring in the ground control point. The ground control point. So when you bring in the ground control point, you use the markers to um, adjust where the point is on the images. So after um, adjusting the ground control point, for reference, for georeferencing, then you can optimize the camera alignment. So when you optimize camera alignment, then you can go ahead to build your dense cloud. From dense cloud, when the dense cloud is done, then you go ahead to build your mesh. So after your mesh, then if you want to build a digital elevation meter, you can do that. Then auto mosaic. So from there, you build your auto mosaic. Then when you are done with auto mosaic, then uh, you are good to go in exporting any deliverable you have. So you can export your digital elevation model, you can export your auto mosaic and the likes. So that is basically the steps in processing and getting insight out of your drone images. So let's wait a while while this is done so we can preview um, the auto mosaic as an exported file. Okay, before now, let me quickly show you something. I exported it as C file. 
I exported the same auto music as T5, so I can go to this uh, export. So this is as T5, so I'm going to open KGIS. So you can go ahead and you might want to work on with your raster KGIS to work on the auto music as a raster file. So I can come to layer, I just want us to view the auto music as a T5, then add raster. So let me quickly do that. This is auto music. Add close. So this is your auto music we have here. So you can see. So from here, you may want to do, you may want to do this digitizing and the likes and so. So that's the preview of the exported data as a TIFF file. So as PNG, I think that is done. Let me save once more. Let me go to that folder. So do we have the, okay, this is it here. Drone in PNG, so we can click on that and view the automosic. Well, I guess the file is huge. So now, we are done with the processing. Okay, so guys, this is the PNG format of the captured area of interest. So see you later. Thanks for staying tuned.